Next up, at UFC Edmonton, we have the main event of the evening. We have Brandon Moreno taking on Amir Albazi. Brandon Moreno, 21-8 and eight in his career, 3-2 and two in his last five. He is riding back-to-back -back losses. Taking on Amir Albazi, 5-0 and oh in his last five, 17-1 in his entire career. And he is returning after more than a year away. We all know Brandon Moreno by now. He was a flyweight champion for a few years there. Long time reigning. Absolute dog. Super fun to watch. He's very tough. Great chin. Puts on a nonstop pace. He's averaging a couple of takedowns per fight. He mixes things up really well. His pace, his will to win, all very impressive. All very exciting. He's going to continue to come forward and stay busy, literally no matter what is happening. He is coming off back-to-back -back split decision losses. And the Pantoja one is what it is. A couple of well-timed takedowns change the fate of that fight. The last one against Brandon Royval is interesting because on one hand, you could argue Brandon won that fight, right? You could argue or Moreno. You could argue Moreno won that fight. But he also looked the flattest and the least aggressive we've seen him in a very long time. He was throwing one punch at a time, just looked flat, didn't seem to be himself. And that's his most recent performance. And now he's stepping in there against Amir Albazi. He is coming back after a full year away. He's a legitimate prospect. He's got good grappling, good striking. He sets a high pace. He is very comfortable striking in his style where he's light in his toes. He'll bounce in and out with a super long jab. And because he's so light, he can shoot nice, clean takedowns. On the ground, very slick grappler. He's not just a wrestler looking for control. He will take some risks, chase submissions. He is coming off that win over Kai Kara France where, listen, his strikes were doubled, the takedowns were... He didn't win that fight. It was a bad decision. But Kai Kara France is very good. He's tiny, but he's very, very good. And Brandon Moreno being a good-sized favorite here is a... is. I want to say surprise. I guess it's not surprising he's the former world champion and Albazi's coming off a fight that most people don't think he won. But it is surprising because Brandon Moreno's on his own little skid and he's coming off the flattest he has ever looked. And if he is that flat foot, only throw one punch at a time version of himself in this fight, then Amir's going to get the takedowns if he wants the takedowns. Amir's going to be faster on the feet if he wants to be faster on the feet. I think Amir Albazi wins this fight. I think Amir Abazi is going to come forward. I think he's going to get it done. I think he's going to be a little bit faster, shoot the takedowns. I don't know what the time off looks like. I hate that he got that bad decision in his last fight. There might be some karma coming his way. Brandon Moreno is a great, likable guy. But if he is not the absolute dog that he was in the first fight against Davis and Figueredo, I don't see how he's going to win this one. What do you think, Jakey Boombalats? Yeah, I think it's it's hard to hate a guy like Brandon Moreno. I mean, you even uh, talked to him and got him on your vlog when we went to 303. Yeah, he, he was just, awesome. Every, everyone that knows Brandon Moreno, he's the nicest guy in the world. His his rise to become the champion is one of the best stories. I think one of the more underrated stories in the UFC. I think it almost kind of gets left behind a little bit since he's no longer the champ and has kind of struggled lately. But him... You know, struggling early on to say, no matter what, I'm going to become the champion. And then the way he became a champion um, and even defended the belt as well is, is absolutely incredible. We all love him, Brandon Moreno. But I think he's a guy that that has accomplished it all. And it, it, it's hard to find that drive again. You can look for that drive. And maybe he's able to find that drive. And if, if there's anybody that can kind of flip that switch again, it probably is going to be a guy like Brandon Moreno. But there is a difference from when you're coming up to when you're already the champion and then you lose the belt and then you have to try to work your way back up to try to be the champion again. And this guy, Amir Bazi, is fucking driven. This guy is coming off heart surgery. This guy is coming off neck surgery. They told him that his neck was in a position where if he got hit one other time, he could be paralyzed. This is a guy that came from a refugee family. You know, I heard a story today um, about his story that when he was like 12 or 13 years old, so he, he grew up in Iraq, um, and then he went to Syria, and then they went to Sweden as refugees, and he got picked on and stuff. His friends, when he was like 12 or 13, <laughs> wanted to go on this field trip. He asked his parents for money for the field trip. His parents didn't have money for the field trip. So you know what he did, Angelo? What did he do? He grabbed a fucking knife out of the kitchen, <laughs> and he went outside, and he robbed the first person that he found so he could have fucking money. He said, I'm going to find my own money, and he robbed people at knife point, <laughs> and he, found, he he got in a bad way with some bad people, but then that's how he found mixed martial arts, and he cleaned up his life, and now he is just so fucking driven. But beyond that, this guy is a very powerful striker. He is a very good 
wrestler. If there's anything about Brandon Moreno, it's a couple things. You can take him down, right? He is not a, an easy guy to hold down, but you can take him down to be able to score. He doesn't really handle power real well. He can get hurt. And in a fight that could be a decision fight, Brandon Moreno also doesn't wear damage very well as well. I mean, he, he does bleed. He does show damage when he's getting hit. Albazi's going to have the power advantage. He's going to have the wrestling. I believe he's going to have the grappling advantage. And I don't believe that Brandon Moreno is the same boxing Brandon Moreno that he used to be with the speed. Albazi struggled with the speed of Kaikar France. And if Moreno was still kind of that same guy, he could kind of match that speed. But losing a close fight against Kaikar France isn't like a bad... It's not like Kaikar France is a, bu a bum. He's got really good takedown defense, and he's a really, really fast, dynamic striker. I think Brandon Moreno is going to be a little bit step behind. And if Bozzi starts landing shots, he can hurt him. I think he can get the takedowns when he needs them. This guy is fucking driven. And I guarantee if Brandon Moreno had neck surgery last year... He probably would just hang it up and say, I've, I, I, you know, I'm good to go. I had a good career. I'm, I'm, I'm done now. This dude has almost lost his life, was almost paralyzed, and he wanted to get— They said, the coaches said he was back in there two days after his neck surgery at the gym. Just He wanted to be there just to watch stuff, to try and absorb and learn. I think it's just the, kind of the, one of those changing of the guards, and Albazi is uh, going to find any way to get this done. Uh, I got to go uh, my Habibi Amir Albazi in this one. Yeah, I mean, we're both on the Abazi side. It's going to, you know, it is going to suck if Brandon Moreno loses, watch him lose because he is so likable. He's a guy that has been entertaining for a while. He's still super young. I also thought he was going to take some real time off after that Roy Val loss. He said he's and it has, it hasn't said he even been of, a year. Yeah. He said he kind of fell out of, uh, I think he, he mentioned like he kind of fell out and then he was going to, I have to go yeah. find my love for the sport again. And I hope yeah. he's found it. He looks like he's enjoying training and stuff like that. Um, you know, soft, I, there's a, a little, I don't want to sway one thing or the other. Cause this could be real information or not, but I don't, it sounds like he hasn't been working on his wrestling as much as he probably should have for this camp. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, I, if he wins, I'm not pissed. I did not bet on this fight. I am picking Amir Abazi. I didn't bet on it because of the surgeries and the layoff. It's like, uh, what the hell is that going to look like? But, um, I, I, assuming they're both healthy and they should be there, I think Amir wins. This should be a really fun fight. It's a good main event. This wasn't even originally the main event. I believe the co-main was the main, and then the UFC pushed it down and added this fight. Isn't that how that was? Wasn't Rose the main? I can't remember. I think that does sound right, but I can't remember. Yeah, I, 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 that's how I remember it, but I could be wrong. That could just be some fake narrative that we saw on Twitter and just absorbed as if it was fact. $8,500 in DraftKings Fantasy versus 77. I got to go 77. That is a low price point for a five-round main event, and the, the guy I think is going to win is the affordable one. So I'm going to go that route. If you do want to unlock everything else, we I want picks.com. I think the surprising uh, bet that, that I placed that you liked was, uh, I'm going to check the odds on that now to see if it's changed. But it was that inside the distance decision, no action for uh, Albazi. Because yeah. he's tough, and I think the finishing upside is probably on the Albazi side. Not that Moreno Moreno is getting finished. Right, yeah, Moreno's right, durable but... as hell, but you get a refund then. Yeah. It's plus 160 now. It was plus 200, so it's moved a little bit. But Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it, uh, th this is a surprisingly wide line for me. But and, I, and I think that, a lot of it is... And fronts fight as well. It, it, this is a situation... Um, so I, I mentioned I'm going to bring it back almost to the Chimaev uh, thing. And I told you guys, Chimaev, I know that Usman survived, and then people worried about the gas tank of Chimaev. But I said, if you watch the Usman fight, he was full defense and still nearly almost got submitted. I believe Rob is going to get submitted inside of three minutes. That's pretty much exactly what happened. In that Kaikar France fight, I know that Kaikar France, people say he won that fight, all that stuff. He was basically fucking submitted, I think, in the third or fourth round. Abazi still got him down, got hit to his back, and basically had a choke fully in. Didn't quite have the angle, and, and Kaikar France was able to kind of out-tough that choke. But if he gets that same situation against Brandon Moreno, he's probably just going to lock up that choke. I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to get in that situation again. So, It's a great main event. I'm looking forward to it. Here's the four fights that you're going to get. The four events you will get if you become a premium member. UFC Edmonton, UFC Vegas 100, UFC 309, and then UFC China. Every single pick bet tool, the data analyzer, Woo. the line movement tracker, the prop hunter, the DraftKings optimizer, preloaded with the ownership projections. 
the picks and bets and breakdowns from Artem, the artificial intelligence, every single one of these things. Right now, we want picks.com. Click become a member at the top for an entire month. And if you want 50, we'll send you 50. We want picks.com slash bets. Use the affiliate links. You sign up, you make a deposit, and we send you the affiliate money. Any last words for the people, <laughs> Jakey boy, after two and a half hours? Uh, like the stream if you haven't already. Put in the comments who you think the lock of the week is going to be. There's a lot of choices this week. I think I have four, five, maybe five dogs that I picked. I bet a few of them already if you guys are premium members. Um, fuck, man. I was about to say something real fucking important. Oh, uh, I think I'm going to be uh, live streaming Saturday, so uh, oh. tune into that, and uh, we'll get back after it. And uh, Oh, I'll be at uh, UFC Tampa. UFC Tampa, I just got those tickets, the last card of the year, and we'll see if Angela ends up there as well.